A press conference is taking place in London about Julian Assange at midday today. Invited are the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, Julian Assange's lawyer and the journalist Peter Oborn. This has been hugely underreported in part due to the government-controlled UK press. The Guardian columnist Roy Greenslade did a short piece in its Monday media section yesterday. The message was that Julia Assange's extradition case to the USA on charges of espionage is an attack on press freedom. Greenslade quotes editors of The Guardian and The Telegraph as saying as much, but this doesn't really translate in their output. Yesterday, a bunch of parliamentary journalists walked out of a number 10 press conference because Johnson's aide try to ban reporters from smaller outlets. Why can those same journalists not show any solidarity to the UK's most high-profile political prisoner who's inside for publishing? Why have they not reported that Assange is no longer in solitary confinement due to a prison rebellion demanding that he be with the other prisoners. Could we have a situation where Assange has more power in prison than out? If the UK extradites him, they will have no credibility left as a country that respects press freedom. The Daily Mirror is being sued in the High Court at the moment for phone hacking. Its editor at the time was Piers Morgan. A blagger stroke private investigator called Jonathan Stafford has been outed as one of the biggest hackers into people's private data. Stafford worked for The Mirror and other papers. He largely got away with it, stealing data. But was it in the public interest to steal private citizens' private information without legal authority? Assange was doing to warmongering governments what Fleet Street blaggers, private investigators, journalists, editors and press barons were doing to politicians, businessmen, celebrities and private citizens. But how many of you have heard about The Mirror hacking trial? It's been covered currently by Byline Investigates. The main on Sunday won't cover it as Morgan works for them. Murdoch won't as he does it, hacking. The Guardian do it and the TV stations, the BBC and the ITV, they won't touch it either. Over the summer, the UK ambassador to the US, Kim Darroch, resigned because the Mail on Sunday published his diplomatic emails. This was called Cablegate. The journo who did the story was a 20-something Brexit party digital strategist known to work for the hard Brexit supporting journalist Isabel Oakeshott. The Mail on Sunday breached the Official Secrets Act. The police did nothing about it and the government said they didn't want to do anything about the case because they didn't want to interfere with press freedom. So why are they extraditing Assange? His work was an example of press freedom and in the public interest. If you disagree, then why is there no public debate about this? No debate is allowed about press freedom in this country. That is left to a judge. The rise of online giants such as Google and Facebook has threatened traditional media such as papers and broadcast TV. This is the excuse used by the government to drop the second part of the Leveson inquiry into media ethics and corruption among newspapers, policemen and politicians. As soon as the government binned the Leveson inquiry, they commissioned the Cairn Cross Review. This was supposed to look at the death of journalism, mainly caused by the rise of social media. The report by Dame Francis Cairn Cross concluded that online advertising has killed local journalism. Targeted adverts remove the need for a classified section in local papers, which then bankrupts local papers and destroys local democracy. In the case of national newspapers, nobody's willing to pay for news anymore, which means the end of expensive public interest investigative journalism. Cairn Cross recommends that there be a public interest journalism foundation or outfit in order to preserve investigative reporting. She talked about charity status and tax breaks being allowed to help fund these public interest journalism organisations. She wanted to set up a national public interest journalism outfit. Nikki Morgan, the unelected media secretary, said no. She said public interest is a threat to press freedom. The BBC then announced 450 job losses, the Victoria Derbyshire show being cancelled. The Today editor Sarah Sands, a complete conservative, herself walked. Murdoch then announced the Times radio launched with no ad direct competition to the BBC's factual output. So the government claims to prioritise press freedom but is openly undermining and underfunding public interest in investigative journalism and is willing to extradite Julian Assange.